Uh, well, thank you guys all for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, it is a Wednesday of a, our last home weekend here. Um, we play Friday against the University of Oregon at 6 o'clock. That's our uh, pink game, so we're excited about that. Um, Oregon's having a, a good season. Uh, they're kind of surging right now, uh, coming off some big wins for them. Uh, and then we play Oregon State on Sunday. I'm not sure what they're ranked, but I'm, it's you know top 10 or 11 or something like that. So it never gets easier. Um, and these are our last two games. Uh, we're coming off of a, a solid weekend. Uh, we got a great win at Cal on Friday, last Friday. Uh, I thought we played really, really well. And uh, we did everything that we kind of, you know, we didn't play perfectly and nobody does, but the things that we, in terms of executing, wanted to do, on both ends of the floor, we did. Um, and then we played Stanford on Sunday and, and just really didn't play well. And so that's kind of been how the season's gone, this whole you know conference season where it's kind of, we play well, we look great, and then we kind of take a step backwards. And, and so we've been a little inconsistent with that. Not sure what that's about. Um, but we've got four games left in conference and then the Pac-12 tournament and then postseason. So uh, it really is just time to – you just got to move on and, and focus on who you're playing next. So uh, for us right now, it's Oregon, and, and we're looking forward to that game. So, Coach, you, you said you had um, a really good win against California, and it was um, on the road. Against Stanford, I mean, it was almost like an entirely different team. Yeah. What happened? Was it just fatigue, or was it you guys just had an off night? You know, I don't know. I wish I knew because as the right as the game started, I felt like we had a really good, uh, you know, Friday's win put a little wind in our sails in terms of you could just tell how the, the players were acting and, and approaching the game plan for Stanford. We had a good practice Saturday at Stanford. Um, you know, Sunday they, they woke up. I could tell that they were ready to compete. Like, you know, they wanted to do well. And so I don't know. And then, but I mean, it was, it was, <laughs> it was evident immediately. It was kind of like, and I use the term, like it was kind of like zombies. We were just kind of like out of it. Uh, I have no idea why. Uh, Cause it's not for lack of desire. Like, it's not like they showed up and thought, nah, whatever. Like, let's just, you know, let's get crushed today. You know, that didn't happen. They wanted to compete, so I don't know what happened. But sometimes I, I also will give Stanford a lot of credit. I think teams that are, uh, you know, Stanford's one of those teams, too, where obviously they're very good. They're eighth in the country right now, so it's not like we lost to a, like, wow, how'd you lose to them? I mean, they're really, really good. Uh, but they are the best I've been around at really taking you out. Like, they, they're play they've got smart players, obviously a great coach. She's won 1,000. It's not too bad. Obviously, she knows how to put a game plan together. Uh, but they have an amazing way of taking you out of what you want to do, whether that's on the defensive end or the offense. Like they, um, even in game, they take you. And then you can kind of, after you play them, you can feel worse about yourself than, than maybe you even should, just because they're just good at that. Uh, they're, they're, and, I, and Oregon State is good at that, too. So um, just in terms of game planning and strategy. So. It's a long answer to your question. The, the answer is I don't know, but I do think we need to give Stanford some credit for really doing a good job from the jump of taking us out of what we had any intention of doing. This weekend you guys host the Oregon teams at home. And just to further illustrate how much of a bloodbath this conference is, this is the third week in a row you guys have played a ranked opponent. Um, and Oregon obviously is having a good season. They've pulled off some good wins recently. You know, what's the mindset of the team going into this knowing that once again, it's another ranked opponent. And, you know, you guys have kind of struggled a little bit against ranked teams this year. Well, you know, I think at this point in February 15th or whatever, it's we're done talking about, you know, like we're not talking about, hey, here comes another ranked opponent. Like, what else is new? It, it, that goes without saying. It's like, yeah, the sun came up. Yeah, we know. Like, it's, it is what it is. And so, um, you know, I think Oregon is very talented. They're young. Um, you know, their best players are young. Um, and so, you know, hopefully we can show up with the kind of competitive intensity we showed up with Friday against Cal um, and then just kind of have a home court advantage with the elevation and, um, you know, we'll see. But it'll be tough. Uh, we, we lost at Oregon uh, earlier in the year. Tay Beauclair went down in the first half with a really bad ankle sprain and we missed her down the stretch. Uh, so she's obviously back. And so we're going to have to play really, really well. But we're not really talking about the fact that, once again, we've got two really good opponents coming in. I mean, that just goes without saying in the Pac-12. Uh, will you talk about it's Paige's senior weekend last uh, game at home? So uh, just about what that's like. I mean, obviously, the 
last year I talked to the girls about it and they wanted to give their seniors a great send off. I'm just sort of what the team's mood is with as regards to Paige as a as a leader and then what you guys lose when Yeah. Well Paige as I've said before, um, Paige is just an awesome human being and uh, and she's our only senior. So it's kinda cool that we can, you know, use this weekend to really just focus on her and, and we don't have our, our attention divided with several seniors. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I think the mindset is, you know, for me as a coach too, I wanted to have a great year for Paige. You know, I'm going to, Lord willing, coach a long time, but this is her only senior year. And so for me, that motivates me. And especially when you have somebody that, of the character um, and the coachability and, and um, that Paige brings. And she's just, you know, I can't say enough about just the person she is. And then on top of that, yeah, she's pretty doggone good basketball player too. So what will we lose with her? Obviously her leadership. Um, she's played in a lot of games. She's a fifth year senior, so she brings a maturity, uh, kind of a physical toughness. She's had some adversity physically with, uh, she registered that one year with a neck injury. Um, you know, she got hit so hard, she lost hearing in one of her ears in, in practice. Like, I mean, she's been through it. And, you know, she's got a toughness and a resiliency to her. Uh, so we'll miss that, uh, just that experience and toughness and all those things. And then, you know, right now she's our best outside shooter. Uh, so we're going to have to replace that. And I think we have some recruits coming in that can, um, but they're not going to be seniors, fifth-year seniors. Uh, and, you know, I think Paige just kind of brings a consistency and a, um, I always know what I'm going to get with Paige, whether it's a Tuesday morning practice or a Saturday night game. She, she is the same. She is consistent in who she is, how she plays, how she conducts herself. And as a coach, that's about as valuable as it gets. Um, will you just describe, if you could, her leadership? Like, what's it like? She uh, does she give pep talks? Is she no, she's know? a she. She's one of the nicest human beings on planet Earth, and so she has a hard time getting in people's face. Uh, so she's more of a uh, lead by encouragement. You know, kind of like, let's go. You know, you're you're okay. We got this, uh, and then lead by example. And so she's just really positive. I don't think. You know, Paige has a hard time saying that it could be pouring outside, and it's like, Paige, how's the weather? It's nice. It's nice. You know, she's she's that kind of person, and so as a leader, she's that kind of person too. She's always going to tell you the good of what you're doing, rather than point out what you're not doing. And any comment on the UConn streak, um, as far as in the spectrum of sports, what that means? I think it's unbelievable, and I think the people that rip on it and say, uh, "Oh, it's because women's basketball isn't competitive," are naive. I think that's completely naive. Uh, I mean, when was the last time you did anything uh, well, perfectly, 100 times in a row? I mean, do a cartwheel 100 times in a row, perfectly. Like, you know, I think people have, it's incredible. And if you take out the one loss that at Stanford in overtime, whenever that was, 2014 or whatever, they'd be 147-0. and 0. I mean, that is staggering, right? Uh, and so I think it's good. I think it's good for our game. I think those that, you know, sit back on their couch, you know, with their potato chips and say, oh, you know, women's basketball isn't competitive, they don't get it. I'd love for them to step on the floor one time uh, and, and lace them up. Set that up. Yes, right? I'd be happy to. We'll meet um, you in Huntsman. I also want to know, just from a coach's perspective, though, because you got kids coming in and kids going out and managing people's lives and injuries. Yeah. I mean, just how – I mean, obviously he gets the best – a lot of the best players. I mean, they don't all go there, but – but he gets some good player, and he's had some of the best yeah, you, of the game has seen. <clears throat> yep. But what uh, from a like how hard is that? Because it's not just him doing it. No. Yeah. Well, and I think there was an article. I don't know where it was. Uh, I saw it this week somewhere, um, just about how they recruit um, kind of their type of player, and you know the players that that kind of fit who they are. And when you're at the pinnacle, you're able to be pretty picky and find those guys, right? But you know they don't find. They don't find the superstars with uh, an ego or the superstar that isn't willing to be really challenged on a level that they've never experienced. So they find the players that are like, yep, I know this is going to be really hard and I'm going to get broken down, but, I, you know, I kind of like that and I want that because I know it's going to, you know. But most superstars aren't that way. So they find those that are. Um, and then because of where they're at, they're able to get a lot of those. Um, I'm not saying that recruiting is easy for them. No matter what level you are, recruiting is hard. Uh, but I think that's the, that's the science of it. And then, you know, they've got their culture and their system and their staff and everything is really established. And so it's a well-oiled machine at this point. Um, but I, I can't even begin to express how 
hard that would be to do, you know, that, and we've all, everybody's heard kind of what, what it's all about and how they've gotten to it. But I mean, if we really step back and think about it, it's, it's incredible. And then hopes for, for you guys, when you talk to them, do you say, do you look at it as the rest of the season or do you keep saying one game, this opponent? One I, game. Okay. One game. But I think at this point, uh, there's, you know, every team in America, there's like light at the end of the tunnel. I think late January, early February is hard because it's like, okay, you know, it's just, it's kind of the dog days. Um, but now mid to late February into March, there's, there's the postseason light at the end of the t- tunnel and the Pac-12 tournament is like, oh, wow, that's within sight. That's in a couple weeks. Uh, and so everybody, you know, you get a little boost in your step from that. Um, so my point is I don't have to say, like, here, there's only four games left because they already know that. Yeah. Um, and I think for us to be our best, we just have to continue to focus on improving and one game at a time. So you spoke a couple of weeks ago in your press conference about, you know, you guys are in the second year of trying to change a culture here and, and trying to, you know, establish a, an identity for the Utah women's team. After, you know, almost a full season, what would you say kind of the identity of this team has been? Well, that's a great question, Jared. I think we've been inconsistent, and that's been kind of our problem um, in Pac-12. I think, you know, at the end of the day, the, the teams that were supposed to be at the top – after however many games they are, you know, and I think there's something to be said for just where programs are with talent and all that kind of stuff. That that kind of pl- over the course of a conference season, it plays itself out. We have still had inconsistent games, um, no matter who we're playing, and I think that's part of changing a culture is that it, it there is you know it's kind of like a sophomore slump a little bit, you know, where uh, you're still trying to figure out who you are. You had some momentum, you had some confidence, and then it's like, uh, you know, so as a team, that's kind of how I felt is inconsistent. What, when we're good, uh, when we've competed well, our, our identity has been, we've been really good rebounding, really good rebounding. We've been really good defensively. I mean, we had some great defensive numbers um, before a couple kind of bad losses in Pac-12 play. Uh, and then I think, you know, offensively when we're good, we are moving the ball and taking great shots. And so moving forward, and, and I don't want it to be, you know, our culture too. I want our culture to be such that it's not centered on one player or one person or one coach or whatever, that it's kind of we're collective, we're good when we're collectively involved. So you, you mentioned defense, and that actually leads right into my next question. Um, when you guys have – held teams below 40% shooting. I, like I know how much stats, you love Jared. stats. I do, I do. Um, but when you guys have, have held teams below 40% shooting, you're 14 and two. Um, I, you know, when they when you allow teams to shoot better than 40%, you're one and eight. And, and I know it's- You think that's significant? <laughs> I, I mean, I think that's kind of a, yeah. kind of significant. Um, it is. And not that that's so much an indictment, but maybe that's just kind of showing the nature of how good these Pac-12 teams yeah. are, but what do you need to do, you know, defensively to really kind of hold Oregon and Oregon State, you know, to below 40% shooting? I know that's going to be really tough because they're great teams, but, you know, what do you got to do defensively to stop them? Well, I don't think our defense, when we have given up higher than 40%, I don't think it's because our defense has broken down. I think it's from the other end. I think we put pressure on our defense unnecessarily. So if we take a bad shot – or we're not scoring, you know, the ball goes through the net, you give yourself a chance to get back and kind of set up what you're trying to do. You miss a shot, you turn it over, you're putting pressure on your defense. And then when you're playing against teams with such firepower offensively, I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna um, make you pay. I mean, they're gonna shoot well for percentage. And so I think if you look at the games where other teams have shot really well, I wouldn't, just say, man, we didn't defend well. It's because we put too much pressure on our defense because we didn't take care of the ball. We didn't score enough, if that makes sense. And a lot of times when you score, then you can set up your presses. You can do all sorts of things. We missed free throws. You can't set up your presses. We always like to do something after a free throw. So I think it's more kind of indicative of uh, we've got to do a good job offensively because our defense is pretty doggone good um, when we're set up and ready to roll. So offensively, is there anything special <laughs> then you need to do? Uh, Not to give away your whole game plan yeah, here. No, but. I mean, and I think we've, we've shot well the last couple games, actually. We've shot better from the outside. Um, we need to continue to do that. Um, I think, you know, I think we just got to play with some confidence. You know, confidence is, especially in February, it's everything. Uh, you got to believe you're going to make the shot you take. Um, you know, and, and at this stage, late February, you know whether it's a shot you should take or not. 
And so it's, this isn't about game planning and, you know, hey, this is a good shot for you. But, you know, they know. So you just got to take good ones and be confident. Um, I think getting out and running will help us. That helps us always uh, get going offensively and, and shoot a little bit better. So, uh, you know, other than that, no, I don't know. Um, so kind of going back to Sunday's game at Stanford, mm -hmm. you guys had a really difficult first half, but then you came out and had one of the best quarters you've had all season. I believe you right. shot something like 69% from the field in that third quarter. Uh, what was the difference there, you know, after, after well, we halftime yeah. for your team? We weren't sleepwalking. And actually, we had a good second quarter, too. We played them even. But we just put ourselves in such a hole in that first quarter where we, it was like, what is going on? Um, and and it's like someone had put sleeping medication in our Gatorade. I don't know. Uh, but then the second quarter, we got going. And, you know, kind of, and then the third quarter, it's like, okay, here we are. But we had dug ourselves such a hole. I don't think we were doing anything. It was just we were actually – following what we had talked about doing in the first quarter, the whole game. We were attacking where we were supposed to attack. We were getting, you know, reading the screens right, doing that kind of stuff, offensively rebounding, getting out and running. We were doing all the things that we wanted to do for 40 minutes, and we just did it for about, you know, 24. Unfortunately, that's against Stanford. That's not going to cut it. Thanks. All right, thank you, guys. Uh, we are in uh, Seattle next weekend. Oh, yeah.